Hello, I'm Zach Attack, and let's talk about the sprite editor in Tick80. Now, I've just opened Tick80 here and I've made a new cart. I selected Lua as my language, it doesn't matter, the sprite editor is the same for all of them. If you press escape, it goes to your editors. Then, if you click on this little Pac Man ghost up here, or press F2, this is our domain. This is where we're going to do art. Now, first things first, the usual buttons are up here. Cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, which is Control X, Control C, Control V, Control Z to undo, Control Y to redo. Not Control Shift Z like you have in some programs. In this case, it's Control Y. Over here, we have two sprite sheets. They're effectively one long sprite sheet because this stacks on top of the other one vertically. But this first one is meant for tiles. That's going to get used in our tile map. That'll be in the next video. The second one is for sprites, things that are going to move, going to animate, things that you're going to use in your game. That's not map data. This is just a convention. You don't have to stick to it. If you want to make more sprites, you can use both for sprites. If you want to make more map tiles, you can use both for map tiles. There's no difference between them. There's no distinction. It's just a convention. Clicking this button, you'll notice it shifts the entire... If you keep an eye on the two little guys up there, you'll see... Actually, let me quickly put one down here so you can see the shift. They move the, the whole sprite sheet up and down. Like these two buttons are oriented, that's how it is on the sprite sheet as well. It splits it down the half. So this side is your entire sprite sheet. Clicking on any particular square gives you an 8x8 sprite with its sprite number up there and the canvas selected for you to draw in it. So if I now just start drawing, you'll see it updates live what I'm drawing in here. Using the arrow keys, you can shift between which sprite is selected. That even works while your mouse is over here. So you can draw here, draw here, draw here, draw here, doesn't matter. Okay. If I want to work on a larger sprite, like you'll see the tick 80 character doesn't fit in a single 8x8 sprite, this little slider up here is my canvas zoom. So clicking there effectively zooms this canvas out to 16x16, 16 16, so two sprites wide, two sprites down, which on here indicates this way. The next one over is four sprites by four sprites, and the next one is eight sprites by eight sprites nice large area. And if you have a larger area selected, like you see me do earlier, click in the center, it'll top left it. Your cut, copy and paste buttons work on the entire area that you have selected over here. It cuts and copies a sprite at a time. Okay. Over here is our editing stuff. So let's go down to a single 8x8, eight eight, just so it's nice and big and you can see what I'm doing. Our tools down here are effectively split down the middle. The left four are our drawing tools. The right four are our transform and manipulation tools. At the bottom is our color palette with our standard 16 colors. More on that in a few minutes. Okay, the first tool, pencil. These, by the way, is one, two, three, four. So if you get used to using the keyboard, you can switch between them quickly. Pencil tool, select the color, click on a pixel, it makes the pixel that color. If you want to do a larger area, this slider over here can go to a 2x2 two two area. Let's use orange for this. 2x2. Two 2x2. Two. Two two. Then let's use green. 4x4. Four four. And then let's use this royal blue. One larger, 8x8. Eight eight. Let's make it like this. Okay, the plus and minus next to your number row, next to the zero, allows you to switch through these and it wraps. So going from the single pixel down again goes to the larger one, okay, if you do want to manipulate those quickly. That only applies to the pencil tool. Next up is our color picker. Click on the color picker, click on a color. It sets that color as your selected color. Now, I didn't mention this with the pencil tool, but it does hold true for the pencil tool as well. Technically, you have two colors, a foreground color that has the square around it and a background color that has the chevron kind of dotted line around the outside. So right-clicking on a color like this yellow, for instance, 
makes that my background color. With a pencil tool, if I'm drawing, I can left click to draw one color and right click to draw the other. Traditionally, you would have your background color set to whatever the background of your sprite is so that you effectively have an eraser on your right click. But if you do want to draw with two colors at a time, that's a nice way of doing it. Okay. Next up, the select tool. Click it. Now colors don't matter. Kind of. Draw a block and then either using these arrows on the sides or using the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can shift that selection around. It is kind of floating right now. So shifting it over that red pixel over there will cover it. But if I move it back before letting go, by, before changing my selection, it will not destroy what's behind it until I either select something else or I select a different tool. Okay, when I said that colors don't matter for the selection thing, I was lying. Whatever you have selected as your background color, say for instance orange, when you make your selection, will take up the space that this moves away from. So if I now move this, what's this, three by three square? If I now move this away, the area that I'm leaving blank behind it will be filled with whatever my background color is. So you don't have layers. Your entire art is a single layer. The best you can do is this little floating selection, which cannot have fancy lasso tool feathered edges or anything. It's just a group of pixels in a square or in a rectangle, and you can move them around until you change your tool and then it sticks. Okay, lastly of your toolbox is the bucket full, which is number four on your keyboard. This will take whatever color you use, either right click or left click, to fill everything of that color that is touching with the color that you have selected, standard bucket full. So if I want this green to be orange, if I want this green to be orange, now it's orange. If I want that, oh, this is worth mentioning. See that this is blue and this is blue. Technically, they are not touching in between here because they're diagonal. So if I now fill this orange, that area is unaffected. Also, the reverse, even though this is orange, if I fill this one to the same orange, it will not run past this. It does not fill stuff on the other side of the orange because that's that that separates it from the next one. Like like a standard bucket full kind of tool. Okay. Those are for manipulating individual pixels. Now these, which the numbers carry on. So this is number five, number six, number seven, and number eight. But for these they are such major changes that I don't like using the, the number keys on my keyboard for these. But this one, let's use something that actually has a little orientation to it. Okay, there's our little 16 by 16 sprite of the Tick80 guy. This flips the entire sprite horizontally, makes him look the other way. Cold shoulder. This one flips it vertically, upside down and back. You can obviously flip both. This one rotates the entire sprite clockwise. So it maps each pixel. See that orange pixel over there? If I rotate it, the orange pixel is in exactly the same orientation, but instead of from the left edge, it's from the top edge. There's no dithering. There's no in-between rotation. It's a hard 90 degree rotation. And then lastly, erase. Clicking this clears the entire sprite and replaces it with whatever you have selected as the background color because it is still considered a background color. So if I, for instance, switch the background color to what is this black? I think so. Yeah. And that needs to be my background color on this delete replaces it with what the background color is. Okay. Those are the basic features of the sprite editor. And in most cases, if you're just doing art, that's all you'll need. This is a perfectly fine selection of colors. But that little switchy up there takes us to advanced mode. This gives us a few extra options. Firstly, is bank zero and bank one. I never use these. I think it's a pro feature. I'm not even sure. It gives you a whole extra bank of colors and sprite sheets. And I don't even know how to access that in code. But there are ways. I think it's part of the pro features, though. 
So those might not even be there on your version of the of the app. These tools all work the same. So this is a perfectly fine selection of colors. Like I said, it's a nice range. We have everything we need. But what if I don't want this medium gray? I would rather have, I don't know, a, a brighter purple than this, but I still want to use this purple. That button edits the color on the palette. Click that, you get three sliders. This is your red, green, and blue in X values. So if you string these digits together, you will have the RGB hex code, like that's used in website design or in some image editors, I believe in Photoshop or in GIMP, you can provide the hex code for the color. In CSS, it often has a hash in front of it to indicate that it's a hex code. You can move these sliders to change the colors. So if I wanted a bright purple, I can do something like there. Now it is worth noting that you can only use the 16 colors that are here. So if you were paying attention, you'll notice that where that medium gray was being used before, it has now been replaced by the new bright purple. So figure these colors out at the beginning of your game design and stick to them because changing the midway might have really weird effects on your sprites. Even more so, say I don't need 16 colors. What if I would rather trade that space for some extra sprite space on my sheet? You can change your bits per pixel BPP. Standard is four. So each pixel on the sprite map occupies four bits in memory, but I can make that two, which means I now only have access to four colors but my sprite sheet has a dotted line on the right and it continues horizontally. See, where before we were shifting vertically, now we're shifting horizontally. So it doubles the amount of space you have to draw, but as you can see, it wreaks havoc with your existing art. So the same as with your color palette that you're choosing, pick your bits per pixel when you start designing a game and stick to it because you can't go back. Luckily, this doesn't break it forever. If I do switch back to my 4 BPP, 4 bits per pixel, it shows the art the way it was drawn. But it has the adverse effect as well. If I now... Just get this out of the way so I can get to my pencil tool. If I now draw something here and I switch back to 4 bits per pixel, that comes out in a wonky way because the same bit that I drew is now being interpreted as 4 bits instead of 2. If you want to go very stylized, but have a lot of space for sprites, one bit is an option. One bit means you only have background and one other color. It's super limiting in terms of design, but you now have four entire sprite sheets per category to use for your art. There are some amazing sprite sheets on itch.io and I've seen a few on Kinney's website, link in the description, of one bit pixel art that works very well in Tick80. And I believe once you've purchased it, it's royalty free, so you are allowed to use it in a commercial product. That is an extreme case, of course. I've only myself designed games in two bits or four bits, most of the time four bits, because 16 colors are a lot, but sometimes you need all 16 colors to do your art. Okay, if you're here on your color modifying section of the thing, the edit palette section, there's two little buttons over here. This one copies the hex codes for your entire palette into the clipboard. You can then go to another Tick80 cartridge and click this button to paste it. Or if you are so inclined, you can even paste it in a text file and save this so that if you find a palette that you like and you would like to use it in future projects you can just copy this into your clipboard make sure there's no additional spaces or anything it needs to be this exactly and then paste that using this button into the card that you want to use additionally if you do want to work on your art in your own program like photoshop or gimp or or some pixel art software, a sprite maybe. These codes are the same as these codes. So you can, 
you can break them apart like this and then in for instance a sprite create a custom palette with these color codes and use that to do your art there are commands in tick 80 uh, export sprites 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 as my sprites dot png to export your sprite sheet the the bottom one or export tiles my tiles dot png to export these to your local file system where you can then load them in a sprite using your custom color palette that you get from this set of colors and then when you're done you can come back here and import the sprites from my sprites.png and they will then occupy in this case that space because I use the sprites command this one is for the tiles command so you can export your sprites edit them in whatever you prefer and then bring them back but keep in mind you have to stick with your color palette that you chose because when you import something tick 80 will try and match each individual pixel to the closest color on here that it can find so it can if you didn't exactly stick to your colors it's going to make you stick to your colors so keep that in mind okay oh last thing last thing i forgot about these these are flags so say for instance i designed this i don't know fire guy as a bad guy in my game and i want to mark him as such let's make flag number two is for bad guys flag number one we can use for ground flag two we'll use for walls i don't know you can decide what you want to use these flags for each one can have all of them set none of them set or any combination in between and then in your code you can use the command if get to get the flag status for a particular number that was set on here for that sprite so is it walkable tick that one is it a wall so it's it blocks line of sight tick that one whatever you want these to mean you can make them mean that unfortunately you can't label them so you would have to make a comment or a note somewhere for yourself to keep track of what each of these flags are used for so that you don't confuse them also if you're working with a larger sprite let's this sprite sheet is a complete mess by the time i'm done if you're using a larger sprite say for instance let me just focus on this bottom right part of the sprite and i said flag number four if i do a canvas zoom you'll see that flag four is still set but there's only a tiny dot in the middle there that means some of the sprites inside this larger sprite has that flag set but not all of them clicking on it once will unset it for all the sprites involved clicking it again will set it for all sprites involved so if i now go to the each individual sprites involved in this larger sprite all of them have that flag set okay i think that's everything if there's any questions or you found a cool trick with the sprite editor that i didn't cover please leave me a comment and i will address it in a future video and then go out there and make art the point of this whole thing is to have fun